So let's go over the pretext cost of debt. And let's find uh, the pretext cost of debt, and so we can finalize and finish the operating lease converter calculations. So to find the pretext cost of debt, um, if your company, the company that you're evaluating, if that company has debt, then it's very easy to find it. So let's go to Bloomberg and um, oh, I see Home Depot. Let's go to Home Depot. Let's find out if they have debt. So that's what you're going to do is you go to your company. And then uh, once you get into the company um, right here, okay, we got it. So we, you go to WACC, WAC, Weighted Average Cost of Capital. Enter. And you'll know if they have debt right here. You can see a number. Once you see a number here, this is the cost of debt for Home Depot. Once you see a number, and you'll know that they have debt. Or, you know, once you go to the other um, right here, you can also find out if they have debt when you fill out this portion right here. You'll know if they have debt or not. Uh, so so let's. So once you get to WAC, click on this number 4. And then you'll see the total pre-tax cost of that right here, and you'll enter this number, the number that aligns with the pre-tax cost of that, and that's 2.63. And so if we were evaluating Home Depot, we would enter this number, and whatever that number might be for your company. So let's go back to to here, and then put 2.63, and that's it. You're done. That's all there is to it. And then, you know, finally, we've got calculations. Of course, these leases here uh, are, came from, I'm not sure what company that was uh, when we did the lease part. Uh, but, um, you know, you, you'll have the leases for your specific company. And then you'll have the cost of that, the cost of that for your specific company. Um, but how do you handle if the company that you're evaluating doesn't have debt? So what you do then is you can read through the notes here then um, you will use proxy. In other words, you will f uh, find the company's closest competitor, uh, most relevant and close closest competitor, and then you can assume, uh, you're going to take, uh, if that uh, competitor has debt, and then you're going to use their number. And you're going to say, well, if my company or the company you're evaluating, say you, if, if, if your company would to have debt, what would that pre-tax cost of debt be? And your assumption will be, well, it'll be very close to whatever the closest competitor uh, debt is. So let's um, let's assume let's assume that Home Depot doesn't have debt. So how do we find the closest competitor for Home Depot? And we go to RV, relative valuation window, enter. And once you go to RV, um, if if the company is global, if they operate in, you know, in global markets all over the world, maybe you can choose global and you can look for global competitors. You'll see, you know, companies from all over the world. If the company only functions in North American and continent, you know, or you can only choose North America, and then you'll get only North American um, companies. So you just, you know, pay attention to this when you're looking for the company's global competitor. Uh, however, since we're only investing in domestic stocks and since we're only investing in, in companies that are incorporated in U.S., U.S. falls under North America, um, maybe you can start looking at North America only and, you know, try to find the closest competitor so because your goal is to find the closest, most relevant competitor. And then when you're, when you look at these levels here, uh, the the direct competitors for the company are in this sub-industry. If you remember from the very first video when I went through, when I explained JIX, uh, you can actually, let's go quickly, just so you can understand again, just a good refresher. Let me open two windows side by side. Uh, very quickly, we're going to go to JIX. To look at the JIX levels, and we're gonna go to Home Depot HD, and we can see um, ORV relative valuation window, 
and uh, we can see Home Depot is in consumer discretionary sector. So this is consumer discretionary sector. That sector has over 7,000 companies. Do you think all of these companies are, in this case, Home Depot's direct competitors? Well, for sure they're not competing with General Motors and you know Toyota and Ford, Honda. So this is a, a um, very diluted kind of overall um, sector uh, level that holds all of the companies. And if you include, if you're looking for direct competitors here in this consumer discussion, even though direct competitors would be in these com in this list, but it's a list of over 7,000 companies, you're including automobiles, consumer durables, media, you know, you're really mixing uh, uh, competitors or companies that have maybe, maybe very, very little in common with your company. So when you go deeper into like the level two retailing, so we go retailing, here is retailing. Now we have, you know, over 1,000 companies, but you still have some companies here that s still don't have much in common with like Macy, um, Target. I mean, they might, you know, have, share something in common, but it's still very highly diluted. So when you go level three, specialty retail, so let's go for specialty retail. Now we're o we only have 735. And uh, you can see you're getting warmer. Um, the the uh, now this is the specific industry, special retail industry. However, the companies are still uh, Best Buy. Um, um, maybe Home Depot and Best Buy offer few similar products, you know. But uh, um, you may still find companies. Gap. Um, not sure if these Gap and Home Depot have much in common. So. You're still getting uh, highly. It's it's still very highly diluted, and you know once you get to the sub industry number four, uh, fourth level, and now, well, let's go back to specialty retail. So you see, when you are in specialty retail, you are adding all of these other, like automotive retail, computer and electronics. So you are adding all companies from all of these other subsectors or industries, and then that's why you're getting unrelated companies so to find the direct competitor you have to be in level four in the deepest level so in this case that's the home improvement retail right here home improvement retail as you can see there are 56 even though these are um, I believe still global companies but this is where you will find the you know you know the closest uh, competitors and then when you um, sort in relative valuation window when you sort only for North America, you can see you only get the North American companies, and this is where you will find the the most direct competitors, the most relevant competitors to the company that you are evaluating. So for for our case, Home Depot, yeah, I could call Lowe's. I could say Lowe's is direct competitor to Home Depot. So maybe even lumber liquidators, but even so, these only handle lumber. Uh, Home Depot sells more than just lumber, and I would say Lowe's would be the most direct competitor. So I'm gonna go to Lowe's, and let's see if they have that. So that's L-O-W-U-S. So let's go to Lowe's, L-O-W, U.S. Equity. And we go to W-A-C-C, -C. enter. And yes, Lowe's does have that, and we click on it, and we can see the total pre-tax cost of that for Lowe's is 2.64, and Home Depot's was 2.63. You see how close they are. So that's that's the best way to find. If your company doesn't have that, you have to say, well, what would pre-tax cost of that be if they were to have that? And then you're gonna go to your most direct, um, the most, uh, you know. Uh, the most direct competitor to your company, and then you're going to use their, um, you're going to use their pre-tax cost of that as a proxy, and then you will enter this number 2.64. Now, it's maybe easier, say for Home Depot. I'm going to give you one more example. Uh, so if Home Depot had only few. If I can find that window. I think I already went into a different window. If I can find, let me hold the 
let me go to Home Depot one more time and then go to the RV few companies to choose from let's let's say you have another company I'm gonna go to Chipotle I think there's CMG was their stock ticker symbol yeah it is and uh, you know let's check if Chipotle has that WACC and we can see that zero so the entire uh, the weighted average cost of capital is their cost of equity and when you click on it you'll see that Chipotle has no debt and have they have no number so let's follow this pattern and then let's say okay we're gonna look for Chipotle's uh, most relative competitor or you know most direct competitor we're gonna go to RV template and you know North America and you go to level four and you end up with a lot of companies here a lot see one you're starting at 100 and you when you reach the bottom you you get to 150 I'm not sure if this is even the full list I believe we are at 50 in the settings we're uh, at 50 limit so you're gonna have to do some homework here and to find what would be Chipotle's most direct competitor and then you know ma make a decision so for some companies may be easier because you'll have uh, just a small list but for other companies that are very highly uh, saturated sub industries you'll have a lot more competitors to go through and you're gonna have to make your you know the best judgment uh, best guess uh, maybe you need to search through the um, Bloomberg's uh, IB um, or uh, BI actually business intelligence um, Bloomberg intelligence um, database to find maybe to drill even deeper to find which um, which which of these would be most direct competitor or maybe you can use other sources you know uh, any other sources outside sources outside of Bloomberg and uh, or you know use your best judgment to find whatever the most com the most direct and most relevant competitor would be uh, for your company that you're evaluating and then go to that company look look up their cost of debt and um, you know enter use that number so I don't want you to be alarmed that you're using some uh, another competitors uh, number for your company as you saw for Home Depot and Lowe's the difference was very small so even if you're gonna use a sum number um, yeah the difference is gonna be very small and the variation in your valuation will be almost you won't even see the variation you won't even see any difference in the variation because the difference are the difference will be very small so that's that's the best way to find this pretext cost of debt if your company doesn't have debt and that's it for this video in the next video we'll go over the R&Ds